Interaction terms are an extremely useful technique in regression analysis for estimating how the effect of one regressor might depend on the value of another regressor. So in terms of how we actually implement this, the, mechanically it's a very simple procedure. Namely, we add a regressor that's the product of two other regressors that we'd like to see how their effects interact or reinforce one another again with the goal of seeing how one ef effect might be dependent on another variable. So let's look at a concrete example because that's really the easiest way to see what's going on. Does the return to education in terms of earnings vary by gender? To answer this question we're going to analyze or examine the usual log earnings equation and we have two regressors of interest in this case years of education, how does that affect earnings, and then a binary or dummy variable for female to capture the gender effect. So here's the model of pre for predicting log of earnings when we have an interaction between education and female. So our dependent variable is the log of average hourly earnings as usual, and then we have a fairly typical simple earnings model right here where the two regressors are education, or years of schooling, and a binary for female. But we've added this new term, which is the interaction term. So we add a new uh, coefficient, beta 3, and then this variable is formed as the product of the female variable times the education variable. And of course we have an error term left over. And this is easy to implement in R or other statistical software. Now, since we've added this extra term with this extra coefficient, beta 3, we'd like to know what it tells us. And to do that, let's unpack this equation and see what it implies for males and females separately. So starting with the males, we know if you're male, you're, the value of female, the female variable, is zero for you. So your average hourly earnings, according to this model, are plugging in zero for female, beta 0 plus beta 1 times education plus beta 2 times 0, so that term is going to disappear, plus beta 3, and the interaction is education times female, and again when we put 0 in for female, since this is a male, that term is also going to disappear, and we're left with a regression line that's this part right here. So for males, our regression line has a simple formula, beta 0 plus beta 1 times years of education, and of course the error term left over. Now when we turn to the case of females, we now have a slightly more complicated expression because female is now equal to 1 and those values are not going to drop out. So in addition to this part which we had for males, we have to add in beta 2 times 1 since the person is female and then the interaction term female is 1 so we have to add in that part as well. Now we can simplify this expression by noting that the beta 0 plus beta 2 times 1, which is just beta 2, can be collected here, and that becomes the new intercept for a female. The slope on education for female is the sum of the beta 1 effect and this beta 3 interaction, because this is beta 3 times education times 1. So we can collect those slope terms, and we have that the slope on the education variable for a female is beta 1 plus beta 3. So comparing these two, the male equation and the female equation, we can see that we have these additional factors that are represented by these coefficients in the female case. Beta 2 then represents how the intercept is different for females compared to males, and beta 3 represents how the slope is different. And beta 3 is often the thing that we're most interested in. That's the coefficient on the interaction. And again, that represents the difference between the return to an additional year of education between males and females. And it's a common mistake that students make when they first learn this, that they tend to think of beta 3 as the return to a year of education for a female. And that's not the case. Actually, if we go back and look, we can see that it's beta 1 plus beta 3 is the overall return to a year of schooling for females. And beta 3 just represents the gender differential in that return. Now, when we use some of the CPS data that we've used in class, the, the current population survey, 
uh, we find that when we estimate this on our sample, we get that the predicted value of log average hourly earnings has this expression. And in particular, you can see that the value of beta 3, which is the coefficient on the interaction term, turns out to be 0.012. The value of the coefficient on the female dummy variable is negative 0.43. So that implies that females have quite a deficit in terms of predicted earnings relative to males at low levels of schooling, but there's a certain catch-up effect because the coefficient on the interaction term is actually positive. So a year of schooling is worth a little bit more to the females in this sample than it is to the males. And if we plug in uh, female equal to zero for the case of males and female equal to one for the case of females, we can see that these estimates imply that this is the earnings equation for males and this is the earnings equation for females and again it confirms that the value of one more year of schooling for a female is somewhat bigger than the value of that year of schooling for a male in this sample and since we have a, a log dependent variable we can interpret this as saying that one more year of education for a male is predicted to increase log of average hourly earnings by a proportion of 0.1 or 10 percent whereas for females that effect would be an increase of 11.2 percent, so a slightly higher return. Uh, we can draw a picture of this, and I'm going to vastly oversimplify this, but I'm going to start with the intercept here for females. Recall that that was 1.27 in terms of the log earnings, whereas for males it was 1.7. Obviously I'm not drawing this to scale but that would be if education were all the way down to zero. For males, we found that the slope, so this is the males equation, that slope was 0 0.100, whereas for females, the slope was steeper, so you can see there's going to be some convergence here, and I'm exaggerating it again a little bit on this scale, but for females, that slope is 0.112. So females start with approximately 43% lower earnings predicted at education level of zero. For each additional year of schooling, there's a catch-up here so that this, these two lines are converging. I'll leave it to you to figure out uh, how long it takes in terms of how many years of education before the female earnings catch up with the males. Quite a, quite a lot of education, it turns out. Now, we can also look at... Uh, other kinds of interactions. So in that case we interacted a binary variable female with a continuous variable years of schooling. Let's look at interacting two binary regressors which can also be quite uh, useful in certain applications. So here would be the model where we've got two dummy variables or binary variables D1 and D2 and then we have this interaction term which is the product of D1 and D2. <coughs> Here's an example. Suppose again we make our y variable the log of average hourly earnings, and then we have two binary variables. D1 is a binary for female again, and let's say D2 is a binary variable if the person has kids. So D2 is equal to 1 if the person has children, and 0 otherwise. Now we can kind of see that these two binary variables imply four possible cases. Uh, we could have a male with no kids, we could have a male who has kids, we could have a female with no kids, and of course we could have a female with kids. And I've put in here, if we had estimated this regression and had the coefficient estimates, this is the implications in terms of the predicted log earnings for each of these possible sets of characteristics. So if you are male and have no children, you're in the upper left corner, and all the values of the variables, and if I quickly look back, you can see that the D1 is 0 and D2 is 0 for this person, so the only thing that's left for a male with no kids is beta 0. So his predicted earnings is beta 0 hat. If he has kids, he gets whatever the earnings effect of kids is, which is beta 2, so beta 2 hat. For a female with no kids, she also gets the intercept beta 0, and for being female, gets the value of beta 1 hat added on that, whether it's positive or negative. Now the interesting thing that happens is down in this lower right-hand corner. 
And in that corner we have a female who has kids. Now the effect of being female is the beta 1, and the effect of having kids is beta 2 by themselves. But beta 3 is if you have kids and are female. And this is going to capture any effect of whether the having kids and being female reinforces, reinforce each other or perhaps possibly offset each other. So we could imagine a case where there's an extra uh, detriment to earnings of being both female and having kids, in which case this interaction term is going to push the earnings level even lower, so we would expect it then to have kind of a negative uh, impact. It's quite interesting to examine that kind of interaction effect between these two characteristics. Finally, we could also interact to continuous regressors, so just calling them x1 and x2, and again we form the interaction term as just their product, and that's quite straightforward as well in terms of implementing it with real data. So here's a simple example, again following up on the earnings idea, so y is the log of average hourly earnings. Let's make x1 the years of education, and x2 the years of work experience, something we've looked at already. Now in this case, beta 3 tells us something about whether education and work experience reinforce each other or perhaps offset each other's effects on earnings. If we found, which is actually often the case in the real world, that beta 3 hat, our estimate of the interaction effect, was greater than zero, it implies that an additional year of work experience will boost earnings by more the more educated the person is, right? So if we make education bigger here, then, and beta 3 is positive, these two things become stronger together, and that means that the return to experience is going to be that much bigger. So if we add up the experience effect here, beta 2, plus the beta 3 times schooling, the more the schooling, the stronger the effective experience. And this suggests, if it were the case, and we often find it is the case, that someone who's had more schooling, more education earlier in life, finds that education, uh, work experience, is of greater value and boosts their earnings that much more as they continue on with their career.